We are currently in my husband's home office here at the house and for the purposes of looking at our home files. This was a requested video from one of my beautiful followers on Instagram, so this video is for you. So let's jump right in. Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great and I'm here today to do a video that's kind of a requested video. The week before last I was with my husband, we were kind of spring cleaning our home file cabinet and I posted on Instagram that that's what we were doing and we were eating some wonton soup and that kind of thing. And so I got some requests to do a video on kind of my organization and how we have the setup of our, of our file cabinet, our home filing system. I don't think I've ever done a video on this. Now we had one system at one time that was basically um, the hanging file folders had them color coded, organized in, in that kind of manner, and it worked okay. But you know, I really wanted something that was uh, really something that worked really well. And I used to work in a place in which we used a binder system to file and categorize things, and it really worked well. And so I wanted to try and incorporate that into our home filing cabinet to see how it would work. And so far, we're really successful with it, and we really like it. And so basically, what the binder system is it's basically instead of having file folders um, hanging files we actually use binders for the different categories and so we use a simple white binder and so it's been uh, kind of what we wanted to our go-to kind of um, product for this along with plastic sleeves and we got a pack of 200 for I think 11 12 dollars from Office Depot I believe it was and so those were the two main supplies that we needed to get our file cabinet uh, set up on the binder system and so one key, key note that I do want to say about this system is that you do need more file space for this system because the binders are larger than hanging files so if you're not looking to kind of upgrade the, the size that you already have then this may not be a good fit for you. Uh, we have a lateral file drawer and we use both the bottom and the top and it works perfectly for our binders but if you don't want anything so large then the binder system may not be for you or if you don't need as many uh, the size you can get a smaller binder instead of getting a one inch binder you um, a half inch binder may be a fit for you the one inch binder is the perfect size for us it fits um, our documents appropriately and what we need but if you um, have less or you're just starting out you may not have as much um, as many documents and need and as many so you may be able to get away with doing this with a half binder or you can combine the categories in the binder um, instead of having just one category per binder you maybe can put a couple or two or three per binder. So it's just a variety of ways that you can set it up. Now on my blog at homewithnikki.com I listed all of the categories, all of the binders that we have in our file cabinet and I put it as a printable, a free printable for you. And I wanted to do this because as a guide that you can use if you're setting up your file cabinet and you just kind of want to know what are the different folders I need or what are the different categories I need. Not saying that my categories are going to fit you, I just wanted to give you kind of a sample um, to something to go by. You can tweak it, you can use what works for you. If nothing works for you, you don't have to, but you can at least see how I and my husband have ours set up. So I hope you can find that helpful. That's why I just wanted to put that out for you. And I didn't want to go through each file on a video. I know that can be so um, tedious. But I do want to show you a couple key points with some of the files that we have because I think maybe they can be helpful to you. Now the first one is the vacation folder uh, binder. I don't want to say folder anymore, it's a binder. The vacation binder is something that I feel was an important category to have because what it allows us to do is when we plan vacations and things like that, you know you have your plans and your itinerary and tickets and things like that, it gives you a place to store it. So you can store it all there. Once you finish your vacations, you can also store your hotel information and all of those things there in case you ever want to utilize that location again or if you have friends that uh, are going to visit there lately, later, you have your information on your hotel and it also serves as a memory. So as we travel, we keep um, kind of the information in there also. The other thing is for tickets. My husband and I we love to travel and, and do different things and so when I purchase tickets I like to put them in the vacation binder because I know that's where it is. So it's kind of like a vacation recreational binder. So when you purchase your tickets you're not putting them in your purse or in your desk and then you're like where did I put those tickets. You always know that this is the binder where all of your activities go into this binder. And so let me tell you about something neat because today I'm getting ready to order some NBA tickets for my brother and sister-in-law just as a little treat. 
And so I use Score Big. And if you are not on Score Big, definitely let me, let me share this with you. If you like to go to plays, if you like to go to um, uh, concerts or uh, NBA games or sports games, NFL games, Score Big is an awesome resource. It's a website where you can go to order your tickets, but you can get about 60% basically up to 60% off your tickets. And the reason why I love Scorebig is because you actually bid on your tickets. So say the game that I'm going to um, purchase for my brother and sister-in-law, you know, I go there, I pull up the actual, you know, the game, go to uh, get the ticket, and then I put in my bid. So I'm not gonna pay whatever the standard fee is or the standard rate is. I am actually bidding on there. And the great thing about Scorebig is when you put your bid amount in there, what they do is they tell you whether they think that bid is going to go through or not by indicating it with red. And so if you see that it's probably not likely that your bid is going to go through, then you can up your number a little bit until you see it's in the green level. And then once it's in the green level, you know, okay, it's time for me to submit my bid because I think it can um, do well and I can get those tickets for that price. So so definitely don't just run out and buy tickets and, and, and pay full price for them. Go through Score Big. See if you can save yourself some money on them. So that's great. So I'm going to order the tickets today and print out my confirmations and then put them in my vacation binder so that I have them there. So I'll put a link to Score Big if you're interested. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, but it is such an awesome resource for those types of things. Now the next important file that I want to talk about and just give you a tip on is your taxes file. Now my husband and I, we keep our taxes, copy of our income taxes for 10 years. And so that requires us, we did, um, additional binders instead of just one binder so because we knew we had to accommodate 10 years worth of information. And so you'll notice we have our income tax or tax binder and then we also have a taxes binder. Now the taxes binder is for that current year. So what happens is, you know, you tend to in January and things like that, your W-2 start flowing in for the year, tax forms and things like that start flowing in for the year. And so we put all those current year forms in this binder. That way, when my husband goes to do our taxes, he simply pulls this binder and he has all the forms needed for our taxes that year. Once he files the taxes and has our copies, he puts it in the other binder for the stored completed taxes. But that taxes binder is just for that current year to store all of those current tax documents. So it really has been a neat process for us. And then of course, after you file your taxes, that tends to be an empty file uh, binder for a while until up, come up to tax season again. So, but it really works out well for us. So, another binder that we have is we have one for our kids. Um, just to say on a side note, our kids are grown and so we really don't have a need to have a, a lot of information on them, but there are things that we keep on file for them, such as their resume and things like that, because a lot of times when things come up, they're coming to us for this type of information. And so, we just keep a variety of information that um, we need to on them in these uh, binders here. And the other key file that I just want to talk about, and again, I'm just talking randomly about the different files to give tips on specifics with them um, here, but go to my website to get the list of all the other, um, of everything. But with um, our wheels binder, this is not only our wheels, this is the wheels of my parents also, because it's important for you to have those important conversations while your loved one is alive. And my parents and I, we've done that. We don't talk about it all the time. We did one conversation about it and, and that's it. Because I want to know what their needs are when that time comes, what they want to happen. And so they've explained to me that, they've provided me copies of their wills, information, so that I know everything that is supposed to happen once they pass. And so um, if they ever update their wills or anything, my dad, he usually just shoots me an updated copy or whatever I need to put in it and I update it and, and, and shred the other one. And so it's just a simple process. But the great thing about it is I don't have the stress when that time comes to have to worry about what am I supposed to do? Wh where is this? Where do they have this? Where do they it's not there. It's in my binder here. They've given it to me while they're al they are alive so that I know everything that I need to do. And so I know it's a tough conversation sometimes to have with your parent or your loved one, but it's such an important conversation because when you get to that time to have to try to figure out this and settle this and know this and, and, and or you need a, uh, or you're in a situation where the living even will comes in place and you don't know what to do. It's so stressful and you and you know that's the time when you're grieving and you don't want to go through that. Take that 30 minutes with that loved one and handle that business and then live your life. We all are going to die one day. It's just the reality of it. So just take those 30 minutes with your loved one. Settle that business have it on file so that when that time comes you simply pull that file and you can handle everything and you don't have to stress. And so I just wanted to um, 
stress that and, and my parents are great about working uh, we work together on that um, so that we all know what each other's desires are so that's where we go there so definitely there's so many different uh, files that I have and so if you have any questions or you see something that you want to know well what do you put in this file what do you put in that file leave it in the comments below I do want to say as a side note that we do also um, have a black box that's a fireproof box and we keep important documents that are hard to replace if something happens to them so um, we have things like our birth certificates and things like that um, in there we also keep our passports in there and so that's just a kind of a safety box that we have it's a small box we didn't want the bigger one we just wanted something even if we have to fold it put it in there and keep it safe I'll put a link in the description box where we got ours if you're interested I'm um, also on my blog at homewithnikki.com I'll put it on there also but that comes in handy too so that's where we keep um, just a few of the most important documents because um, we never hope to have a fire or anything but if we do we don't want to have to try to replace um, certain documents because it can be kind of difficult. So that's just my little gist on my file cabinet. I hope you've enjoyed seeing it. It's actually a big black box that's in my husband husband's office. He kind of maintains these files and he's he doesn't mind having the file cabinet in his office and I'm so happy he does because I do not want to have this big box in my office. So definitely I hope you found it helpful. Go to my website if you want more details on that printable and have a beautiful day. I'll see you at the next video and this is Nikki saying goodbye. Before I leave, I want to share with you that I posted a video today on my budget-friendly spring tablescape in which I share with you how I updated my back porch for the spring season, along with I share with you a spring breakfast slash brunch that I did for my husband and I this week. I'll link that video below, so definitely go check that out. Also, for my new subscribers, I want to let you know I have a second channel called At Work With Nikki. I'll link that channel below, and I just posted a video on how to make money on YouTube. It's a part of a series I'm doing on sharing tips for other YouTubers, tips that have worked for me. I want to share with other YouTubers. So I hope you will enjoy that also.